Hey folks, thank you very much for joining me for this case study of a 2000 in-vehicle IoT platform deployment. Uh, my name is RJ Mahadev, and I'm the global head for remote and mobile assets at Cisco. I hope all of you are staying safe and safe wherever you are. And um, as I walk through this, please feel free by, uh, to ask me any questions that you have. If uh, you'd like to have a discussion after the session, you can reach out to me over LinkedIn. Uh, at, at the address below, and I'd love to keep this conversation going. So um, let's talk about what the customer was looking for when uh, they originally came to us. They had 2,000 vehicles with a legacy vehicle logic unit platform uh, on, on board the vehicle that was sort of the brains of the operation. Um, and it was connected to their RFID uh, systems for passenger counting, their mobile data terminals, all of their video systems, their PA systems, destination signs, as well as their uh, LMR and mobile radio. Besides the gateway connecting the VLU, they also had a gateway for their fare payment system. They had another gateway for passenger Wi-Fi, and they had a couple gateways for um, their telematics units on both the vehicle. So uh, as you can imagine, they had a porcupine of antennas on the roof and uh, a number of implications, right? So one was the cost for installing and maintaining the system. Each of those antennas cost them $1,500 to $2,000 to implement. Uh, they needed different cellular and backhaul providers for the different gateways and systems that they had. Uh, oper operating it was a bit of a nightmare. And um, there was no security because some of the gateways didn't have encryption. And also they were stymied in their capability of deploying some of the newer um, cloud-based applications uh, because of the capabilities of the VLU. They also had scaling challenges. You know, imagine 2000 vehicles with disparate systems, different gateways, all of it disjointed, uh, really difficult to monitor and control it. And especially with the desire that their uh, bus staff are, are able to take care of it without pulling in IT. Uh, they had a number of challenges. So their initial requirement coming in was they wanted a system that was simple, secure, and scalable. Simple to deploy with zero touch uh, provisioning that deployed both the gateway and deeply integrated it with their onboard systems. Something that was really secure. So both from the standpoint of uh, providing superior access to their onboard systems uh, by remote uh, maintenance techs, uh, especially at these times of COVID, they needed uh, people uh, to access the vehicle when the vehicle was not at the yard. Um, and also, uh, when the vehicles were out and about, they were constantly under attack, so they needed a really strong cybersecurity protection. And they want to make sure it's scalable. Both they wanted uh, scalable hardware that was really robust, as well as the ability to support edge compute and a lot of new applications on it. So in order to think about how they could do this, uh, the first thing to think about is the different systems on board the vehicle. So uh, on the right-hand side, you see all of the vehicle operation systems that they had, which was essentially their J1939 and CAN bus uh, for vehicle telemetry. So they could do predictive maintenance on the different vehicle systems, as well as get vehicle information like fuel monitoring and uh, breaking information from the vehicle. They had all of the fleet operations uh, that they needed to manage. So this is the CAD AVL for doing dispatch and vehicle location, as well as being able to allow their transit management center to connect to the vehicle. Um, and then they had all of their business operations. So the transit management for customer fare collection, customer Wi-Fi, uh, displays, and all of that. So they really needed the system that would support all of these different operations and processes that they had to run on the vehicle. The way we addressed this was we started with something that was really easy to provision. So a, cap a process where their network architect was able to develop bespoke configuration for the different vehicle types and was able to ha set these configurations up in a cloud platform that the bus mechanics could reach and they could use to deploy uh, the different templates based on the requirements to different vehicles. And, and one of the uh, innovations that we did was we 
we unified the vehicle gateway ID with the bus ID. So this way they didn't have to remember a gateway MAC address or an IP address. They were able to use the bus ID to inventory and provision the vehicle. The other thing that they wanted to do was a single pane of glass for their SIM management so they could activate, suspend, or deactivate their SIM card uh, at the same time that they were managing their gateways. So this way, for instance, if the bus was uh, at the yard getting fixed, they could suspend the SIM, or they could also do real-time rate plan management to where if they were using, reaching their usage threshold, they could uh, on the fly go up to a higher rate and um, and manage uh, overage charges. So, so that was sort of the key requirement here was to have a very simple way to provision their buses so the bus could quickly be put uh, into service. The other big requirement they had was for security. Like a number of other transit operators, uh, they had had two security uh, operations impacting security incidents in the last three years, and they have a huge focus on security. And they wanted a multi-tier security model where they could secure the edge so nobody could get access to their system by hacking into the gateway on the vehicle. So this included having authentication, it included having things like accelerometers and GPS asset tracking to see if the vehicle has been moved and having uh, input alarms. They also wanted to make sure that they secure the network communication with things like extending their enterprise security end-to-end -end from the vehicle all the way back to their enterprise, having uh, deeper visibility onto the traffic traversing that network, having things like hardware-based encryption as well as secure management uh, of all of their hardware and software. And, and lastly, they wanted to secure their applications. So they wanted things like audit reports of you know, how applications were being used. They wanted to have a hosted application lifecycle uh, management. And they really wanted to make sure that uh, they didn't have to worry about getting hacked again. So the way we did this was we started with building, giving them uh, configurations that provided uh, dot one x authentication as well, as well as firewalls in the gateway that was specialized to their requirements. This way, anybody getting access to the gateway would not be able to hack into it and get access to the bus systems as well as uh, the rest of the transit systems. The second thing that we did was uh, from the cloud, we were able to push out end-to-end -end flex VPNs and we're actually able to push out different VPNs so we could provide an additional layer of security for their financial systems. So the financial data was kept separated and protected. And then we could also ensure sort of higher availability and the confidentiality of their CAD AVL data. The third thing that we did was we integrated with some of their enterprise security with things like Umbrella that provided content filtering. So this way, um, users, Wi-Fi users on the bus uh, would not access content that would make other users on the bus uncomfortable. They could do things like identity services management to, to manage both the devices as well as the identity of the different users that had access to the system. And they could do deep packet inspection of the traffic traversing the network using things like stealth watch. So all in all, this reduced the need for them to go to third party security vendors as well as it improved the protection from uh, evil players and, and hackers out there. The other thing that the security provided them was an ability to have secure remote access. Because of this end-to-end -end security, when they had issues on the vehicle, like for instance, if their onboard CAD AVL system had an issue at 10 p.m. at night, um, they didn't need to take that vehicle out of service, offload the passengers, send another vehicle out, and bring the original vehicle back to the yard. Instead, the transit center could contact the bus mechanic, and the bus mechanic was able to remotely access the backend system, the devices on board the vehicle through the gateway. And because there was an end-to-end -end flex VPN tunnel, this was highly secure. They were able to 
troubleshoot and do firmware updates to those devices as if the vehicle was back at the yard. And this way, without taking the vehicle out of service, in a matter of minutes, they were able to fix the bus and have the system operate smoothly. This secure remote access uh, was a huge boon to the operations and, as you can imagine, really improved the customer experience as well as their operational processes. The third thing that the customer uh, wanted to do was really ensure that they had a strong edge compute platform. And when it came to edge compute, they wanted to do a couple different things. They wanted to make sure that they could extract data from southbound systems with pre-integrated connectors. So they wanted connectors for J1939, as well as a Modbus and a, and a couple MQTT devices that they had on board the vehicle. They wanted very simple scripts that would let them govern and transform the data. So for instance, they could uh, combine data in different ways. And they wanted the ability to deliver that data natively to uh, Azure, which is where they had a number of the different applications, as well as to applications that they had with Software AG, who was one of their other providers. Besides this requirement for edge intelligence, they also wanted to leverage the Cisco IOX platform that gave them a full Linux environment that they could use for deploying microservices. Let me tell you more about how they use this. Um, they were able to develop a full standards-based open ecosystem on that vehicle and were able to deeply integrate some of these edge compute microservices with their cloud-based applications. And, and again, this was not a wall garden. This was something where the different partners could develop either uh, virtual machines, VMs, or could push Docker-based containers onto the gateway because the gateway had processors that were dedicated for the Linux environment. So essentially from the cloud, they were able to push these uh, Linux-based microservices onto the A29. And they were then able to pull data and push data either to that onboard device or to the transit center or to the public cloud. And there were some very, very interesting applications that they were able to deploy. So for instance, with NetMotion, they were able to do better vehicle diagnostics. So they were able to actually map signal strength around the route of the vehicle and figure out when they would use uh, one, pro one cellular provider versus the other based on the signal strength that they saw in the route. Uh, and they got this information from NetMotion Diagnostics. Um, they use Swiftly for providing uh, real-time route management. So essentially their transit management center had these head up Swiftly displays that told them where the vehicle was in its route, whether it was running early or late, or if they needed to do something to, uh, to improve uh, the, the route so they could really optimize the route. And they were able to use uh, applications from KPIT who built a full TCU stack on the gateway and was able to provide deep onboard diagnostics in a simple heads up display in the cloud. So again, these are just samples of different uh, partner applications they were able to use. In many ways, the world was their oyster because they had a standards-based system available for, um, for developing applications. The, the TCU stack was especially interesting. So drilling into that a little bit more, it was a really low memory footprint and it provided a number of different connectors like J1939, DOI, OBD2. And so it enabled them to use either an ethernet or a serial based connector to their CAN bus. Uh, they could take the data and they had a number of different onboard APIs and a runtime environment that could do both test and diagnostics. And they had all of the different diagnostic codes available so they could diagnose information. And they actually had a very rich FOG application available that connected back to the cloud so they could seamlessly manage vehicle faults and different vehicle parameters. and and this was seamlessly managed either on board the device or in the cloud and, and really gave them a rich set of uh, diagnostic and telemetry capabilities. Uh, 
The other thing that they could do, uh, which was really interesting, uh, especially because of COVID, is um, by using this microservice, they could integrate with their IRIS pass APC, uh, automatic passenger counting devices that were on board the vehicle that had historically been used for uh, providing regulatory information at the end of, of the day to say how many passengers had been on board the vehicle. They could now access this information in real time and push that to the Swiftly app. So this way, uh, Swiftly was able to say when uh, the passenger count was, re was reaching the 25% threshold that was required for social distancing on board the vehicle. And so now in real time, they could send another vehicle to pick up passengers at the bus stop and they could instruct the vehicle not to stop uh, at stops where passengers did not need to disembark. And, and this way they were increasing the number of passengers on board the vehicle. Uh, the, company, the customer found this incredibly useful. The other thing that they were interested in doing um, in the future was integrating with some of the intersection management applications that the DOT had deployed, where, um, for instance, pedestrians were detected uh, by the LIDAR, LIDAR system and were sent to the gateway that was at the intersection. And um, the DOT was able to run some very simple scripts that could send DSRC um, messages to both the buses as well as to uh, other cars that were on the roads to instruct them that pedestrians had been detected. The DOT could also send um, a signal to uh, using NTCIP uh, to instruct the vehicles that pedestrians have been detected and they could also warn their DOT traffic management system that there was a potential incident that could happen if vehicles didn't stop. So again, a very elegant way to um, integrate with the intersection, something that we've been trying with uh, a few DOT customers in Florida and Las Vegas that they were interested in deploying at their, um, in their location as well. So again, a lot of this was made possible because of the open partner ecosystem. So they had a wide variety of partners that could develop and deploy these applications, uh, either their ISVs um, or they could actually have machines like their um, sensor or their machines for, for doing their ramps that were integrated uh, into the vehicle. They could also have their system integrators and their VARs or some of their distributors develop applications, or they could even integrate a lot better with some of their service providers or some of their global partners. So, so really a very elegant edge compute uh, platform that was made available because of having a Linux-based development environment available on the vehicle. The other thing that they did was they worked very closely with us to validate and document their end-to-end -end architecture with a Cisco validated design that provided them documented best practices that they could use um, for effect, more effective operations and to improve the reliability of the system. And this also provided much better support both from Cisco as well as some of their internal support because they had a documented configuration of record that they could use for change management and really drive the simple, secure, and scalable objectives that they had for the platform. Right, so hopefully all of this gave you an idea of how they were able to uh, combine their provisioning, their security, and their edge compute to really have a very effective end-to-end -end IoT platform. Um, from an IT perspective, uh, this was really the four key components uh, that they integrated. Their secure device, the integrated edge compute, centralized gateway management, and integrated cellular data management. Um, NetNet, how, where did this leave them? This left them with a multi-service onboard network that seamlessly connected to a number of different systems that they had at the vehicle, their payment systems, their signage, their Wi-Fi, their OBD2 and J1939. 
as well as their VLU and voice. And all of this was done with sort of a two component solution, the secure gateway with edge compute and a very mechanic friendly gateway and some management. Addressed a number of the challenges that they had so they could focus on deploying passenger services. It really simplified how they manage the different systems and it was really simple for their gateway mechanics that had previously had a challenge with this. And again, that simple, secure, and scalable value proposition was very, very useful and interesting to them. The other big benefit that they had uh, was they now had an architecture that some of the other city agencies could also deploy, and they had a unified architecture across different agencies. So not only was mass transit able to leverage this platform, the first responders and the city fleets and the DOT fleets were also able to use exactly the same platform. So this way they could then um, leverage their operations across multiple agencies, not only for their vehicle, but also for their remote sites, like their traffic and roadway sites, uh, some of their pipeline sites, as well as some of the other remote access requirements. So again, as you can imagine, a very simple and elegant platform that they could extend across different smart city requirements. Thank you very much, folks, uh, for your time. Um, the Q&A is open, so do uh, hit me with some uh, questions that you might have. I'd love to have a little bit of an interactive dialogue to make sure this comes alive. So whether you're a transit agency or whether you're a different type of uh, remote or mobile asset user, or if you're a vendor, especially if you're a startup, I think uh, this is a very interesting platform where you don't need to worry about the onboard network. Uh, you can instead leverage that with cloud-based applications and really start selling uh, software as a service in a very effective way uh, to your customers. So do hit me up with questions. And um, if you're not able to uh, have your questions answered during the session, uh, do reach out to me over LinkedIn. I think remote and mobile asset owners are at an inflection point for two reasons. Um, the digitization trends have continued and have actually accelerated with COVID. And there's a greater reason for remote management of your remote and mobile, of your mobile assets, as well as your remote sites and doing things like predictive maintenance and cloud-based applications. And, and this type of a platform really makes it easy to do that. Uh, take care folks and uh, look forward to interacting with you. Goodbye. So uh, do type them into the chat window, and I'd love to um, interact with you live here. Um, if you can't get to your questions here over the chat, you can also reach out to me over LinkedIn, and we can have a further discussion. So I'll be around uh, till the bottom of the hour for the next five minutes. While we're waiting, uh, some of you, I think, might have some questions around um, 
more how startups can partner with uh, Cisco to build uh, to to use this platform to drive some of their applications uh, using edge compute. And that's something that we're starting to see a lot of activity with a number of different partners that have uh, cloud-based applications that now you can deploy some of those workloads to the edge. And using edge compute, you could do a more effective um, management of IoT data. And especially with things like video cameras, you could manage how much of that data gets sent to the cloud and maybe send it when certain events occur as opposed to stream all of that data. So this way you're really sort of managing both your cloud as well as your uh, backhaul costs. And um, that's actually uh, one of the big benefits we see of IoT is the flexible nature of the platform and the fact that it's sort of a horizontal stack. It allows uh, startups to develop vertical applications that can ride the stack. And we are very interested in talking to companies that would like to further flesh this out. So that's definitely uh, something of interest if, if that's the business that you're in.